Oh, can you feel that? Ah, oh, so beautiful. Ripest one has still got the seed. You. Kia and welcome. My name is Oish Dibi and I'm a vocal coach with over 18 years of experience in teaching people like yourself how to sing. If you're interested in learning to sing with more confidence and stability, check out the link in the description below because my online singing school, The Vocal Academy, would love to see you there so that you can get real personalized feedback on your singing progress. In today's video, we're gonna be singing, we're not gonna be singing, we're gonna be seeing Katy Perry singing, thinking of you, she's amazing, it's an acoustic set. Let's see what she's up to with her vocal technique. Enjoy, it's thinking of you. She's just the most fantastic singer. So we heard her say, heard her speak at the very start there. Um, let's just go back to this. So we can just have that little bit. I mean, she says, enjoy. Enjoy. It's thinking of you. There we go. So we can hear that she's got no constriction in her natural spoken sound. So this is being created for her singing voice. We've got a little bit of that constriction coming in at the back. Of, which she's kind of like going in and out of as she's going higher in the range. She's sort of like letting go of it and bringing it back in again. going into that falsetto sound, perfect sign. And she's using those sort of like throat kind of constrictions, you could call them, in order to color the sound. You don't have to do that, but it's a really nice way. It's very, very, very low volume. And you go, da, da, da. She moves, as she's going higher, she's moving her, like, her face away from the microphone so that we're not getting that increase in volume coming through the microphone there. Oh, I don't think I know the song, really. Perfection like an apple hanging from a tree I pick the ripest one has still got the seed You said move on with So we still got the seed going into the falsetto sound there and she's using these constrictions sort of like all all at the same time she's modifying the vowels so, what is one i still got the seeds you know she's not going into these pure vowels which we don't want to do any when we're singing in contemporary music but those changes in the vowels are really serving the lyric in the way that she's using them to to change the feeling um, and add emotion to her singing. It's so important that we're actually having a conversation with a real person every single time um, and not just going, I still got the seeds because often even the simplest melodies are the most difficult to sing because we really have to do quite a lot with the lyric and with our voices. You said move on with the work I guess second best is all I will know Cause when I'm with him I am thinking of you Thinking of you What you were doing You were the one who was Spending the night How I wish you I was looking into your 
the eyes. Ah, so beautiful. And and the way that when we move onto a onto a sound without words, it's meaning that the lyrics aren't enough anymore. And that's why we start to use those ah, with those sort of like utterances because it really it comes from an even more emotional place. So we perceive it as the audience members to come from an even more emotional place. You're noticing there that she's moving her head away when she's going to a higher full voice sound. You really must do that because, you know, this is a, is a I Heart Living Room concert. So although they would be working in the back end, really a lot of the modification for what goes into the microphone has to actually be, has to be done by the singer itself. So when you're singing louder, you want to move further away from the microphone. When you're singing quieter, you want to come close to the microphone. And in the end, it just makes the, the job for the audio engineer much, much, much easier. Let's just have a little look at that. She's flipping beautifully between this thicker vocal fold sound and this falsetto. Can you feel that? You know, it's not even like the most stable sound, but it doesn't have to be because it's really about you know, bringing across the meaning of the lyric rather than making these absolutely perfect sounds. There is no real room for perfection, I don't think, anyway, in this type of music or in most contemporary music, actually, because I think perfection really stif stifles our creative. So we're doodling around sort of like the B4, which is the B above the middle C there, that's sitting right on the passaggio for most female voices. So that's why thinking of you, that's why she's able to flip so nicely or so easily between the chest voice and the falsetto there because if you're singing a song that sits right on that area it means that you can kind of play with that sound you're like an indian summer Center, how do I get better once I've had the best you say? There's tons of fish in the water, so the waters I will taste. He kissed my lips, I taste your mouth. He pulled me in, I was disgusted with myself. These lyrics are just so fantastic, aren't they? She's just like such a wonderful songwriter. And I have actually seen her live in concert, so I did know that she was actually a very good guitarist. And it's just so beautiful how we have this really simple repetition in the guitar going through. There's not a lot of changes actually going on. If I was to have a look at the sheet music, I'm pretty sure it's just the same thing over and over again. And that's feeding into this emotional idea that these thoughts are just going around and around and around in her head. So it's really a beautiful marrying of the both of those. And that's what we really want with the music as well, that we're sort of like underpinning the actual the theme of the song let's go and have a look at that chorus well sort of the second verse now I love that she it appeared that she was getting louder but you notice that she didn't really move away from the microphone so it's telling me that actually this apparent loudness is probably coming from a slight darkening of the tone or just allowing those vocal folds to thicken up ever so slightly to kind of give us that boost of those lower frequencies Indian summer in the middle of a winter like a hard candy with a surprise center how do i get you can hear how do i get a bit so when we're dropping the larynx there in order to create that slightly darker tone that's going to give us that little bit of extra push and it sounds louder although you're not actually singing louder once i've had the best you say there's tons of fish in the water so the waters i will taste he kissed my lips at again loads and loads of vowel modification to taste the water 
the what is our test? You know, she's sort of changing them into these more open vowels. And as she's going higher, that more trumpet shape is allowing what's well, helping to get into that belt quality. Oh, I chest voice higher up. We're not quite belting just yet. He kissed my lips, I taste your mouth. He pulled me in, I was disgusted with goodness me so you can't help that when you're hearing her I did, did. we've got this kind of like almost look I'm not making fun of a Katy Perry is an most an amazing song but it is sort of like this angsty kind of kind of sound I will you it sort of sounds a little bit squeezed at the top there now we can really see that she's very, very, very pregnant at this time. So uh, pregnancy can have a load of different um, benefits in one way because that weight really helps to kind of stabilize the sound. That's what a lot of pregnant people have told me. Um, but also at the same time, it can also, with the hormonal shifts, cause quite a large change at the level of the vocal folds themselves, actually, in terms of swelling, things feeling more difficult than usual, um, and just in general having a reduced feeling of the, or like ability to make that contact here at the level of the vocal folds. And sometimes even a feeling of thinness and a loss of that, uh, that like volume in terms of the resonance that we're looking at in the sound. So we have seen with our recent video of Katy Perry, and I'll put uh, that at the end of this video, that, um, you know, she's kind of, she's got this really resonant, dark, lovely sound. So it's quite far from this kind of like angsty kind of height. Um, so we won't, you know, that can also be caused by just creating, by again, that constriction of the back of the throat, just being a little bit too much. But, you know, that's her decision. Uh, that's probably an emotional decision as well at that time, but it could be due to a whole bunch of reasons. Yeah. Um, and so we, we can't kind of like pin down which specific one it would be, but I love that it feeds in again to this feeling of like, oh, I'm with you this sort of like utter pain and, and sorrow in the sound. I feel like it actually kind of fits quite well. Looking into your the best And yes, I do regret How I could let myself Or let you go And now Now the lessons learned I touched it, I was burned We can hear there again this like change between this thicker vocal fold sound and this falsetto. She's sort of allowing the voice to flip where it really wants to go. But I mean, as I said, Katie is like, gosh, she's had such a long career and she's been singing for such a long time. These will just be decisions that she's decided to make with her voice and with her sound rather than going like, ah, I really want it to be like full and range and all that sort of stuff. She's allowing those emotions to come through in the way that she's singing it. And I really like actually, it's quite, you know, she's building the intensity in her, she's not doing any body movements or anything like that, but in the intensity in which she is strumming the guitar and also the intensity at which she's sort of using her facial expressions can make a huge difference to the performance rather than just sort of like linearly, linearly, whichever is correct, uh, just getting louder, which would be really boring. That's hard. Oh, yeah, upon the B4. And because the mouth was so closed, it makes it much, much easier to go. 
here and to flip from that belt sound into that falsetto there just at the end that's really hard with such a small mouth position but we know this is like you hear the this you hear a song from Katy Perry and you know that it's Katy Perry singing yeah and this is one of the reasons she's really stayed true to her sound and this I do do with this like slight tightening there at the back of the throat and also probably a little bit of the tongue root there because we can't really take the two apart well we can't like just tighten one uh, and leave the other ones out of it. I, I love that. I really think it's about, especially for new artists coming through, I think it's about like finding your sound, but also finding the sound that you really love and sticking to it. And that's something that like a vocal coach would never, ever, ever want to do. They would never want to say, um, you know, oh no, change what you're doing, Katy Perry, so that no one recognizes that it's you. Um, you only want to try and like fix things or help a singer when they're having troubles with that which is why I created the vocal academy so that you can submit videos to the academy to myself or one of the teachers in the academy and we will give you feedback based on your goals and what you really want to achieve and it's personalized one-to-one -one, um, through our on-demand singing lessons as well so check that out in the description below <laughs> so beautiful i do know this song actually it's just so so stunning um so we've got this and she's doing this real cry that's something i so see with a lot of singers in the studio is that they don't do enough singing and this is what would be the main or this is the main difference between speaking and singing is that cry in the sound where the larynx just it, it doesn't like bleh, come out here it just ever so slightly tips forward to elongate the vocal folds and also to to bring on that extra um, vibration that's need oh, not vibration but the vibrato can then like be allowed to come in then when we when we allow that forward tilt and so we then perceive that to be more of a sung sound and that's what will really really help you especially if you're trying to sing higher in your range or if you're trying to really like increase your range is to do more of this more complaining on the pitch and if you do give it a go let me know down in the comments because I would love to hear from you but I have a free masterclass available for you down below if you're interested in learning to sing higher in your range and take me away no more mistakes Cause in your eyes I liked you So we had that beautiful bright eyes it was through that that falsetto sound then we had that little bit of vibrato coming in there absolutely beautiful coloring techniques it again brings our attention to the beauty of the voice with vibrato which is why you largely heard throughout the song hardly any vibrato whatsoever and I think that it's important to note with with contemporary music that we don't want to just blanket have vibrato through everything we want to use it at the end of a phrase as that extra push to kind of it just changes the color without us getting just louder Oh, that was just the most beautiful performance, wasn't it? Wow, absolutely fantastic. You saw there just at the last, stay, yeah, 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 
it. So she got bum dun chicka chicka bum chick chicka chicka dum. She had those four bars of chords there at the end, and she just before the last set of four looked to her guitarist to say that this was going to be the final run through, and uh, that's just some. I mean. It's funny, actually, because I, I was speaking to a guitarist recently who runs jam sessions and he said like, oh, it's just easy. Um, you know, oh, they just come and they'll have a look. And I don't think that those skills are particularly easy. If you're someone who's never done that before, never worked with other musicians before. Um, so what I want you to think about is that the like when you're singing your song, when you're usually going through that, just that last little either the last line of your song or your last chorus you just speak with, you just let, you just look at your musicians or you do this and then uh, they know that that's the last time that you're going to be singing through that section of the song or even at the last four, you can just go one and then you t can just say that they, they just run through their one more set of chords because I think that these are skills that we, we do gather over time, but I think I think musicians that find it easy to pick up music and sort of talent, like music musicians who have a lot of talent already or, or sort of came from a musical family can find these things really easy and kind of like given skills. But a lot of things to do with music are not necessarily like just given skills. Um, and we do have to learn them and it doesn't take long. Someone just needs to tell us that that's what we need to do. Um, and then you have it in my, and then the next time then you can easily implement it into your practice. So that's why I have the Vocal Academy because those sorts of little little tidbits, how to join in jam sessions, how to um, start your own YouTube channel, for example, how to start up with other musicians is all included in the Vocal Academy. So you can check out the link in the description below. Check out some more Katy Perry here because we had a look at her recently and she is on fire. Let me know down in the comments who I should take a look at next with a link, please, to a live performance because that's what I'm looking for. I saved my playlist and uh, I open it up on filming day and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Am I excited to have a look at now? Have an awesome rest of day. Just remember that anyone can learn to sing. You just have to be given the tools to like learn how to do it. And that's what I'm here for. So I'll see you around here next time. Happy singing. Kakitano.